Greetings, true friends. Today I want to elaborate upon the film Aquaman because I actually saw that a few weeks back. And the reason I saw it, the reason I saw a thing spawned out of Hollywood is that I need to stay updated upon these things because we are after all in the middle of a rather intense culture war so it's good to stay updated and to uh, dissect these sort of things. So um, and also a, um, a little warning to everyone, once you start thinking about these uh, type of themes in films it can be hard to ignore them so you might have been able to enjoy Hollywood movies before because you don't actively think about certain reoccurring themes but when you actively start thinking about them um, yeah it will detract some of the quality and you will start appreciating Hollywood movies less but um, anyway on to the film itself I thought it was yeah, it was a great film I uh, might s see it again at some stage but uh, there were quite a few instances of Hollywood cancer and the usual Hollywood cancer so first and foremost we have his um, parentage which is then a uh, queen looks like this and uh, his father is a uh, non-noble and someone who is from the land so uh, looks like this uh, good actor otherwise which I like but uh, I did not approve of this union between these two and it's obviously a tale of the queen is running away from the oppressive patriarch in her home civilization in uh, Atlantis and falls in love with this um, man from outside of her tribe so not particularly glorious at all and this is also something that comes into my next point uh, because you have two guys Aquaman himself which I also like as um, as an actor and everything like that it's uh, Carl Drogo and he's very charismatic and uh, cool in the film as well you know a jacked barbarian going around uh, being epic but um, he doesn't represent me of course but he represents something else and that is the other the other who has a perspective that the other prince do not have so if you look upon these two half brothers the white guy, the guy who looks like an elf sort of, he is for some reason a bit mean. However, I will say in the defense of the film that he does raise some very good points in terms of environmentalism because he says quite accurately that, you know, the people on the surface, they're polluting our oceans and killing our uh, friends, which is the whales, etc. So he does bring up some cool points and he isn't ultra evil either, it's just that he is not, you're supposed to root for Aquaman instead because obviously he's the main character. But the point here is that a note on leadership, you have two guys, two brothers, one who in his defense he says he doesn't want leadership, he doesn't want command or anything like that. And the other guy, his younger half-brother, he's basically groomed since birth to become a prince, to become a ruler. He is trained since, since he was but a merry young boy to become a king. But in the film then, it tells that just because Aquaman has this unique perspective because of his birth, because of his birth from a queen of the sea and a common man of the land, he has this unique perspective that allows him to be better, he's naturally better than the guy his half-brother prince who's trained his entire life to um, be a certain role and this is something very dangerous this uh, kind of thinking because it's first and foremost simply not true leadership is not something you're born with sure you can be born with leadership qualities such as such as you know charisma energy and everything like that but when it comes to the more advanced aspects of leadership it takes far more than that you need to be very organized you need to have a lot of training in these sort of things and you need to be from a somewhat early age you need to be grow in to that role so it's quite unnatural that the guy just because he has a different perspective he has a unique perspective because he is mixed therefore he has a better understanding of how to rule uh, and this is something a theme that you might see in today's political discourse as well when you see leftists saying oh we should let in America for example we should let these Hispanic women rule because they have a unique perspective and the white straight male he has a bad perspective because of who he is and it doesn't matter then that the white straight male has trained his entire life to be responsible and in a leadership position it's uh, all for nothing because he ha doesn't have this unique perspective and it's also the matter of letting an outsider 
rule over, in this case, Atlantis. So Aquaman comes in as a semi-outsider into Atlantis to rule, whereas his half-brother has been there his entire life. So it's quite obvious that he is uh, more suited to rule. And then also, it's uh, I won't spoil anything now because it's so obvious from the start, but the girl chooses Aquaman over his brother for whatever reason, I don't know why. But that was also one of these points I thought was a bit silly and Hollywood cancerous. But anyway, great film, a lot of Hollywood cancer. The most cancerous thing I thought was that, you know, leadership uh, difference between someone who's just born with a different perspective versus someone who's actually trained for it his entire life. I'm sure you also, if you've seen it, you thought of more blasphemous things but I just thought to mention that and uh, yeah just wanted to share those thoughts with you but uh, then again like in terms of the film uh, great scenes great aesthetics uh, some good points in regards to environmentalism etc so yeah thank you for watching xxo boom